everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. In this one we're going to be doing a tropical update here and boy is this one a bit more urgent than recent times here. Where in the last few weeks we really had nothing to talk about. Well, we've kind of flipped the shoe for sure here. We now have two areas of interest now. The first one here, this first disturbance, I'm especially interested in and even a little bit concerned about because this has not only a 50% chance of developing within the next week here, but also look where it is going. I've mentioned plenty of times in recent outlooks and updates here that the 60 degree west line, if it gets past this point and has a track like this, it is always something you have to pay extra close attention to, especially given the environment that we have over here waters are very warm you can see that on the bottom left corner here just where the ocean temperatures are sitting at this current point in time here we're dealing with abnormally warm waters over the caribbean and of course the gulf as well so we're gonna we're gonna be watching this one with bated breath here because as you also can notice once you get past this 60 degree west line to the west it's nothing but land for this storm to get into we also have a secondary area over here, and this has a 20% chance of developing within the next seven days. This could go on a similar track. It really just depends on the upper level environment and how quickly the storm strengthens. The faster the storm strengthens, the more likely I think it would be to have this turn out to sea. But if it takes the slow and steady path here, it could do a very similar thing to disturbance number one. This is what the storms are currently looking like on satellite here. Both our disturbances are here and here. This is number one, very disorganized, along with number two, also pretty disorganized at the moment. Thing is though, the environment, you can even kind of see it on the satellite. As far as wind shear is concerned, it's actually pretty light. So this is a very ideal environment for these storms to develop in and thrive, especially as we get further off to the west here. You can actually look on the GFS Ensemble model here and take a look at the wind shear profile. And what needs to be made note of are these blue areas right here. You can actually ignore the red areas on this one. Well, you shouldn't because that's strong wind shear, but it's the opposite with hurricanes in comparison to tornadoes. Hurricanes want light wind shear. Tornadoes call for stronger wind shear, especially directional shear. Hurricanes hate that. They can't thrive in that at all. And like I said, right over towards these areas of interest, look at how light that wind shear is. And you get a little bit of venting even here with the amount of wind shear that's north of it too. The storm may struggle maybe a little bit on the north side, but it's not gonna be really anything that stops it. And look what happens as we get towards 210 hours here. This is September 7th. Look at that. Look at how light the wind shear is over the main development region. And this is gonna continue to be a trend throughout a good portion of the month here what also kind of piques my interest too as we go further along is if we look at the gulf of mexico right here we have some troughing going on so there is a chance that if this storm gets past the yucatan peninsula here and into this little strait leading into the gulf we could have these storms actually be pushed into somewhere like florida or the uh western parts of the, or the uh, central part of the Gulf of Mexico here where waters are extremely warm. So as we continue to go forward here, you can see that that trough pattern is going to be pretty dominant over the course of the next couple weeks here. So this will not only uh, create active weather situations for the deep south here, this could create a situation with a land falling tropical system here. Right now, as we know, we can't guarantee anything because these storms are still developing. I mean, we see the disturbances on satellite. It's pretty obvious, but there's still a long way to go. And a lot can happen with these. Just because we see it on models does not mean that it's guaranteed to occur. There are plenty of examples of that. And even last night's severe weather was a great example. So switching gears over to the what's really been the biggest inhibiting factor for the tropics this season and it's this bit it's been this saharan dust here it's been circulating around this high pressure and then kind of just swooping down around the main development region any storms that have tried to come off the west african coast usually get choked out by this there's a nice little pocket right here 
where we're not dealing with quite as much in the way of Saharan dust. But what this dust may also do is kind of what I mentioned before, and that is keep these storms weakened long enough or hampered long enough to where they could get further out to the west. Because notice as we go to the west, look at how much moisture there is in comparison. It's pretty, uh, pretty expansive, the amount of moisture that we have here in comparison to the central and northern Atlantic here. Interesting thing to make note of as time goes on here, especially as we get later into this model run here, is you see this little low pressure feature right here on the GFS operational. You see this turn off to the north a little bit, and then all, and all of a sudden we see a little clearing right here, and we see the Saharan dust be reduced over towards the main development region as we get towards the middle of the month. That's something we're going to have to pay even closer attention to, because if any storm systems go over this region during that time, while that Saharan dust is lighter, it could be even more areas of interest as time goes on. But if we were to go ahead and look at our ECNES -E here, I'm, this is a new model to me, I'm still learning about it. But if you were to look through this model, watch what happens. So this is what we're looking at current time today, right? And what you'll notice is these little L's, these are low pressure areas. These are how pretty much all of our tropical systems start out as. Look at where these end up going. A lot of these that end up developing, like a few of these do turn out to see, but a lot of these are starting to make their way into the Gulf. And I do find that very concerning. This is, of course, over the next 300 and, well, not 360 hours, but 240 hours, excuse me. So 10 days. It does look like there could be a system on the way to the Caribbean, maybe even the Atlantic, like I said, still developing, but I'm pretty sure that's our current disturbance or disturbance number one. The next named storm would be Francine. So we'll be keeping an eye out from, on Francine from here on out. We'll be making update videos probably every two to three days, depending on severe weather, because it's a pretty active pattern going on over the US as a whole here. But we're gonna be starting to switch into tropics mode a little bit here soon. But in either case, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also don't forget to share. Some big changes coming and Hope to see you on the next video so we can cover that too. Till then, some time out at Weatherman. Take care and have a good rest of your Friday.